Good morning, Grace Missoula. My name is Reverend Eric Strader. I am one of the pastors here at Bozeman United Methodist Church, as well as the Congregational Resource Minister for Montana West. Part of my role in as the CRM is to walk with your church to play a supporting resource role in the midst of transition and in the midst of changes that you are experiencing as you get ready to welcome Pastor Bill and enter a new life as Grace Missoula. This first week, we are going to uh, hear the story of Lewis and Clark, a sermon titled Canoeing the Mountains. He dipped his hands into the icy water and took a cool, long drink. Fifteen months of hard travel, endless days of back-breaking, upstream slogging had led to this very moment. Nervous nights in a strange land, mosquitoes galore, cold winters, grizzly bears, and a month-long portage around an intense, immense waterfall. It's 1804, and Lewis and Clark were sent by President Thomas Jefferson to find a way through the Northwest Passage, to find a water route to the Pacific Ocean. Their route was the Missouri River. All of them were expert canoers, right? They navigated the Missouri in search of its headwaters because they believed that it was there they would discover that downhill ride to the Pacific Ocean. Literally. Meriwether Lewis believes they would walk up a hill, look down its gentle slope, and there would be the Columbia River to take them swiftly yet gently to the Pacific Ocean. Instead, they found the Rocky Mountains and at that moment had to figure out how to be not canoers, but mountaineers. Boats were exchanged for horses. New adaptions had to be made. Everything they knew and understood about their world changed. They could no longer canoe the waters. They had to canoe the mountains. Have you noticed that our world changed? And I, I don't mean in the past 15 months. I mean in the past 20 years. I mean, beyond the obvious that you're a little older and some of you probably weren't around even yet uh, some of you weren't even a member of this church yet we're on the internet all the time now 20 years ago it was just at work we rent movies on amazon instead of going to do you remember blockbuster remember dvds state of the art 20 years ago vacation today is never a vacation because we are still connected. And terrorism is a real threat in our world. You don't have to memorize anyone's phone number. We have speed dialing now. Online dating is normative for young people today. Um, there is a thing called a flip phone. Anybody still have one of these? Yeah. For most of us, your phone is your camera and your camera is your phone. For the church, Changes in technology and society have also impacted the influence we have in the world around us. The reality is we have less impact than we did 20 years ago. Now, while we know it's changed, do we really understand what that means for us individually and as a community? Today, church attendance is a fringe activity. Not even 20 years ago, the conversation was, where do you go to church? Pre-pandemic, 33% of the people who live in Gallatin Valley say they're religious, but only 24% attend worship. It's a similar number for the Missoula Valley as well. Most churches have an all are welcome sign or a welcome statement, but does it mean anything to non-churched people? Do they scoff at our hypocrisy what are the hindrances physical to your building but also just realistic in the culture that limit people entering your church 
What says, no, you're not welcome here? What says, we would love to have you join us? Even regular church attendance is now irregular. 20 years ago, regular church attendance was one in three Sundays a month. 10 years ago, regular church attendance was one in two Sundays a month. Today, it's one in six. Post-pandemic, it's one in 26. Christmas and Easter are the only times we connect with half the community of faith. 20 years ago, traditional worship was an organ. And there were 18,367 chapters of the American Guild of Organists. Today, there are less than 10,000. That means there are half the organ players there were. Traditional worship today means a praise band. Organs are considered classic, not traditional. Praise bands are considered traditional today, not modern. So what's modern? We are evangelists, just not really for the church too often. We tell everyone about the latest Netflix show we're watching or the latest recipe we made. We might tell them what's the best coat to wear in this new valley. You should definitely tell Bill what coat he needs to buy. When was the last time you told someone you went to church and what it did for your life? Evangelism has become a word we choose not to use, and we need to embrace it again. Cultural commitments have changed the world, right? People have all kinds of things pulling them away from the church. Soccer, swimming, skating, it's all on Sunday. In 2000, 41% of the country participate in church. Today, it's down to 29%. So this one is a bit personal for us. See, if you see at the gym, okay, you're fine, I'm just going to pause. So let's talk about this. If you see your pastor at the gym or the mall or the grocery store, do you feel like you're going to make excuses for not being in church? Let's not be community that shames people. Like, let, I, I think we should get shirts that say, no excuses, no guilt in faith. It's only an invitation. So to that end, we have to recognize what the barriers are for the invitation. There's a lot of hangups about church today. And for a place that is supposed to be good at reconciliation and forgiveness, Sometimes, frankly, we're bad at relationships. It is hard to trust churches. And so this is the place we've arrived in 2021. This is our world that God has called us to minister to. In Galatians, in the letter to the Galatians, Paul is writing to the church, a church that had become rigid with the world that was changing around it. Galatia was holding to a Jewish orthodoxy, meaning that converts had to follow all the Jewish laws and rules. Yes, even that one for the men. Paul makes the case that Jesus never asked that of his followers. And not all of Jesus' followers were Jewish either. And so Paul writes that Gentiles can be as close to God as Jews, which the church in Galatia disagreed with. Jews had thousands of years of tradition and sacred history. What do these traditions mean if they don't give us an edge over our Gentile believers around us? And so the Jewish leadership in Galatia wanted a hierarchy of believers, really a status within the church. We've been here longer. We built the building. We've cared for the building. You can do other things, but you need to care for us first. Paul says we are all clothed the same with God's love. There's no Jew or Gentile. There's no Catholic or Presbyterian. There's no United Methodist and Global Methodist. There's no gay or straight, no black or white. And to embrace this truth in Paul's epistle, 
the church in Galatia had to change. For scripture texts that are thousands of years old to be of relevance to us, they have to help us know that they have done something in people's lives. We can make changes just like the faithful in Galatia changed too. We can adapt to the world around us. We can change as the world changes. We too must change. In the past 2021 years, the Christian church has experienced what I would call four deep system changes. The first was within Christ's life, death, and resurrection, with Paul sharing the gospel with the Gentiles. When Martin Luther nailed that new way of being against the church doors, against the Catholic church, and when John Wesley left preaching inside a dying Anglican church and began preaching to coal miners and drunkards in the fields surrounding them, to non-believers and all manner of people who were not welcomed in the church. John Wesley said, The world is my parish, not the four walls of the church. I believe we are in a next deep system change. You are living it right now. The challenge for us is figuring out, what do we ditch? What canoes do we need to let go of? The challenge is we have to discern what changes we actually need to make. But first, we have to change our viewpoint, our lens, our understandings, our judgment of the world outside of us. You know the world has changed. But knowing doesn't change anything. We have to see the world differently. Richard Rohr is a Catholic theologian who talks about the church today living in the midst of change by living differently. Instead of living here in these four walls, Rohr invites us to live on the edge of the inside of our building living on the edge of the inside of our building allows us to then hold to the inside which fills our faith, but also engage the changing world outside these walls. This is a time, Grace United Methodist, to change. To see the world has changed, to adjust our lens and our perspective and our call to be connected to those who are outside of the church walls as much as those who are living inside by living right on the edge and seeing the people there. Amen.